Hey, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us from wherever you are, your living room, kitchen, dining room, wherever it is that you are. Man, I'm so thankful that you're watching these videos. I'm hoping that you're gathering your family or if it's just you watching your, your phone, whatever it may be, man, I'm hoping that the God, that the presence of God that we feel in this place is going to be felt right there wherever you are. I got to be honest with you, son, the last couple of Sundays have been just a little bit strange for me. Uh, I'm not used to not being at church for seven hours on a Sunday. On a Sunday. And, uh, but I do have to say that I've actually enjoyed getting to just sit down and watch the service. And let me tell you what the Tenna family does, and maybe you guys can do this, is, is we set a certain time on Sunday morning. So we decide, hey, 9 o'clock in the morning, we're going to turn on the video. And so we wake up, we get breakfast done, we get whatever chores we need to get done. And then 9 o'clock, we start the video. And we'll do worship together. And sometimes the kids sing along and sometimes they just scream along. I don't, I don't know what, what's going on. But then whenever worship starts, we typically have a little, uh, I call it a sermon bumper that go into the sermon. And whenever that starts, then... What Lorena will do is she'll go, she'll take the kids into the kitchen or into their bedroom and she'll put on on her computer uh, the kids' church uh, program and then they'll watch that. Lorena will run back into the living room and we'll watch the message together. And you better believe that I am saying some loud amens whenever I'm watching that video. Uh, somebody's got to say amen. And, uh, but I just want to encourage you guys. So there's a link below on this video. I want to encourage you, if you have kids, go ahead and press pause, either right now or after worship, and let your kids go through that. Our kids absolutely love it. Hey, we're praying for you. We're believing that God is going to move through this message, and we're believing that God is going to move through this video, into through this screen, and into your life, and into your heart. I want to invite you, would you prepare your hearts, and let's just worship God for a few moments. I love you.
church, we're going to be joining an initiative called Unite 714. Unite 714. And you, and you can go to uh, that website, unite714.com. And what it is, it's based on 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 that says this, then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. And what we're doing with Unite 714 is we're going to take two minutes out of every day, one minute at 714 a.m. and then another minute at 714 p.m. And wherever it is, whatever where, where at, whatever we've got going on, we're just going to take one minute at 714 and we're, just, we're going to pray. And we're going to ask God to bring healing over our land as as we draw back to him, we're going to ask for healing over our land, but we're also going to ask that God sparks revival in our land as well. And uh, we're going to be joining hundreds, maybe even thousands of churches around the United States and even some in other countries that have already been jumped in and doing this. And, and uh, if you go to the website, you can find that there's a prayer for each week. So this is going to actually start week three, and this is the prayer for week three. Lord, we come to you in prayer today, believing the promise in 2 Chronicles 7.14 that if we humble ourselves, pray, and turn from our wicked ways, you will hear our prayer and heal our lands. Our community, nation, and world are in desperate need of your help and comfort and healing power. Lord, we ask you to forgive us for turning our hearts away from you. Hear our cry today as we join with the body of Christ around the world to stand together against COVID-19. 
Lord, strengthen our minds and emotions with the truth that you are greater than COVID-19. Your righteousness protects our hearts from despair. Your word enables us to walk through this crisis in peace. Although this is a physical disease, as believers, we know the enemy wants to take advantage of this moment. Together, we stand in faith against the powers of darkness in this evil day. We put on the whole armor of God and stand firm on the promises of your word. With your armor, we stand protected from the fiery darts of panic and fear. We take up the shield of faith on behalf of our families, our churches, our cities, our nation, and the nations of the world. The hope of salvation is our battle helmet. We declare the promise in your word that no weapon formed against us will prosper. Therefore, we pray in faith that COVID-19 will be eradicated. Panic will stop and God's power will fill the earth. And God, again, I pray for everybody listening to the sound of my voice right now. Lord, we pray for peace and for joy and comfort. And what the enemy meant for evil, we believe, God, that you are going to make it and turn it into good in the name of Jesus. And we declare this in the name of Jesus over every single person listening to this, God. We declare it over our homes and over our families. Lord, we're asking you for for wisdom over our, our government, God, and over the leadership of our nation and over our communities. We're asking you for grace and for strength for everybody working in the healthcare system. We're asking for peace and joy for everyone in the name of Jesus. Come on, church, join us, and let's just worship a little bit longer.
right now might be a perfect time for those of you that do have kids to go ahead and hit pause for a little bit and uh, go ahead and get the video started for the kids. Again, my kids, they have absolutely loved it. They've enjoyed it. Um, for those of you that want to continue your giving, there's still the two simplest forms or the simplest form really is a text give to 479-777-4264. Or you can mail, mail in a check to us, TRC, at 170 Fraser Road, Granis, Arkansas, 71944. Hey, we've got something very excited coming up uh, this coming week. Um, starting April, um, I mean, starting Monday, excuse me, tomorrow, as you guys are watching this, Monday, April 6th, we're going to start the Easter Family Experience Challenge. And we'll have some more information on our on our Facebook, so follow us on Facebook if you don't already. Make sure you're keeping up. But we'll have more information. But basically, there will be a challenge for each day of the week that you can do with your kids or with your family. And then we're just going to ask you to just snap a selfie, man. Take a picture 
and you don't have to put all the crazy filters on it. It can just be natural. And, uh, but take a picture and then post it in the comment section or, or on our page just so we can see who all is keeping up with it. I think it's going to be something very fun, very, very exciting for the kids as we lead into Easter Sunday. Um, also, if you have not hit the subscribe button on our YouTube page, hey, that would be a good idea. That way you get notified every time that we have a video go up. Um, I want to say very quickly, and then we'll jump into the message, how grateful I am to all of you guys who are sharing the video. I know, I know many of you guys are sending the link uh, to your friends or to your family, and I, want, I just want to say thank you for that. Um, not necessarily because we get more views, but because of the impact that I know it's having. Uh, I, I'm getting texts and or getting messages from people, or or even getting just getting stopped or whatever as I'm walking into a store from people that I would have never imagined who is watching the video. And I know it's not because we've got we're great at marketing because we have done a terrible job at marketing. But it's because of you. It's because you're taking time out of your day, and you know that it could be. Uh, it can make an impact in somebody's life, so you're sending it to somebody. Thank you so much for that. Thank you for, for thinking of others in this time, and, and I'm praying, listen, if you are that person and you've received this video from somebody, I want you to know, I may not know your name, but I want you to know we're praying for you. We're praying for you, not, not just myself and my family, but our trustees of the church and whoever sent you this video, they're praying for you as well because we care about you and we want to see you Walk out your, your faith with God. We're in this series called Jesus Still Is. Jesus Still Is. And uh, it's based out of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 that says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We believe that the same Jesus that walked the, the earth over 2,000 years ago is the same Jesus that we believe in and that we serve and that we just got done worshiping we believe he's the same we believe his character is the same and we believe that he has the same power in other words the same power 2,000 years ago that rose from the grave that conquered death that conquered sin that paid the price for sin is the same power that he has today and last week we looked at how Jesus is still the prince of peace and today we're going to look at how Jesus is still the light of the world go with me to John chapter 1 Verses 1 through 5. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. It says, In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God creating, created everything through Him, and nothing was created except through Him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His life brought life to everyone. And then listen to this. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. God, we ask that you would use this word to speak hope into people's lives today. God, help us understand your word. Help us to receive your word. But God, more than anything, help us to live your word out. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. What this scripture is saying when it says this last part, I love it. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. What it's saying is no matter how dark it gets, God's light will always shine through. Have you ever noticed it's not darkness that ever overcomes? It doesn't matter how, how cheap of a flashlight you have. You can have one of those 99 cent uh, flashlights that I don't know where you'd get one, but a 99 cent flashlight with one of those little AAA batteries and shining, and, and, and it's not darkness. It doesn't matter how dark it is outside or how dark it is in the room. Darkness will not overcome that little bitty cheap light. Now, it may not be, you may not be able to see everything clearly, but it's still shining. Darkness never wins. As long as light exists, darkness will never win. And I want to tell you, it does, we don't know. We don't know. We still don't know. All these weeks in, we still don't know what's going to happen. We don't know how much longer this is. Gonna, um, they just extended the date to April 30th, but who knows if they'll extend that even more. We don't know how difficult this is going to get. Or, or maybe, Lord willing, everything just goes back to normal in just a couple of weeks. Either way, we don't know. But I want you to know this, 
that no matter how dark, no matter how troubling, no matter how difficult it gets or life gets for you outside of this pandemic, I want you to know that God's light will always shine through. And as we talk about light and darkness, I want to explain to you a little bit of what they represent. So darkness, darkness represents difficulties. It represents troubles. It, difficult, it, it represents confusion. And every time I think of darkness, I cannot help but think of stumbling. Uh, you, you know, whenever you wake up in the middle of the night, you don't have a nightlight on and you're trying to make your way to the bathroom or to your kid's room that because your kids are just screaming god bless them but uh you're trying to make your way wherever and it's dark and and it never never fails you're gonna kick something i mean anytime you're walking in the dark barefooted you're gonna kick or you're gonna step on something and that's what darkness represents it's stumbling confusion uh, chaos difficulties whereas light represents clarity that's probably one of the best words i could use it's just clarity just we we you you can see you can see now if you trip you kick something it's because now now you're just not paying attention but you can see you can see it also represents god's favor in your life now this isn't a this isn't a prosperity message this is this is just representing god's favor god opening your eyes to the light and I want you to know this, even when times get dark, like they may be getting dark for us now, even when times get dark, we don't have to walk in darkness. Listen to what Jesus says in John 8, 12. Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. If you follow me, you don't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. Doesn't matter how dark, how chaotic the world may get or our individual worlds may get, you do not have to walk in darkness. Jesus is right there, man. Jesus is right by your side. He's always, he's never farther than just an arm's reach. He's always right there and no matter how chaotic how difficult he's there i want you to know he's there i want you to know that he has never abandoned you i want you to know he's never forsaken you i want you to know that he has never ever turned his back on you and he never ever will there is nothing that you could ever do to make jesus love you any less than he loves you right now he loves you and his love for you is perfect and never ending never changing you don't have to walk in darkness. And with Jesus as our light, I want you to know that there's nothing to fear. Psalms chapter 27 verse 1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. So why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress protecting me from danger. So why should I tremble? Man, there's so many people out there that would love to fill your minds with fear. And maybe some of them do it purposely and some others don't do it purposely. But there's so much fear out there in the world right now and, and so many conspiracies and so many doomsdayers and so many people saying we'll never, we're never going to recover from this. this is, and, and can I tell you, don't give in to fear. Do not be overcome by fear. Do not allow fear to settle deep into your hearts. We don't have to fear anything. With Jesus as our light, we don't have to fear anything. And I don't know about you, but, you know, if you've ever been walking in the darkness, especially, I, I, you know, I, I act tough, but sometimes I got to tell you I'm a pansy, especially whenever I'm walking through the woods, headed to a deer stand or something like that. And I'm walking through the woods and it's pitch black and I hear something ruffling in the, in the, in the trees. Like I, I, I swear it's Sasquatch or it's a 600 pound grizzly bear that's about to get me. But you know what? If I'm walking with the flashlight and I can shine over there and I see that it's just a little bunny rabbit or it's an armadillo or it's a possum or, or something like that, all fear leaves me. 
And let me tell you, that's what some of us need to do is instead of giving in to all of this fear and giving in to what and listening to what everybody is telling us, what we need to do is we need to shine the light of Jesus on whatever it is that they're saying. We need to take whatever it is that they're saying and go to the word of God and say, okay, how, what does God say about what they're saying? How does it line up with what God is saying? If we'll shine the light of Jesus, let me tell you, man, we, won't, we will have nothing to fear. Nothing to fear. So how do we walk in the light? Well, Jesus clearly says in John chapter 8, verse 12, he says, if you follow me, if you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness. So number one is, hey, you follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. In other words, get to know him. First John chapter, chapter 1, verses 5, 6, and 7 say, this is the message we heard from Jesus and now declare to you, God is light, and there is no darkness in him at all. So we are lying if we say we have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness. We are not practicing the truth, but if we are living in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. We follow Jesus. The, the number one way, the first way, we begin walking in the light as we start to follow Jesus. We start to walk in his footsteps. We start to change our lives to reflect what his word says, what the Bible says, and not the other way around. We begin, we begin to allow him to be Lord, to be a, a, a king over us. In other words, we're, we no longer make decisions based on our emotions and what I feel like doing and what I think I should do but we base it on what Jesus says about my situation. So follow Jesus. If you want to step out of darkness and walk into the marvelous light, as the Bible calls it, then we begin to follow Jesus. We begin to take his word. And this is number two, is we read and live the word of God. Psalms chapter 119, verse 105 says, your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. Psalms 119 verse 130. So just jump down 25 scriptures. And it says, the teaching of your word gives light so even the simple can understand. Hey, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful for a God that speaks to us so simply that even I can understand. Hey, and I want you to know Listen, I, I love everybody, but I want you to know, hey, if, if there's somebody out there that is complicating the word of God for you, more than likely they don't even understand it themselves. So don't listen to them. Because the word of God actually simplifies life for us. It simplifies decisions for us. It doesn't make it more complicated. It simplifies it. I'm not saying it's easy. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's easy to follow Jesus. I'm just saying it, it simplifies it. So we begin to read and we begin to live the word of God. In other words, whatever it is, you know, you, you may just be, maybe this is the first time, this is your first interaction with the church and with maybe with God and with the Bible. Then, then where do you start? You start with whatever it is that you know. Whatever it is that you know about what Jesus says, you start your obedience there. And listen, and, and the more that we read our Bibles, the more that we listen to messages like this, and the closer we're able to grow to Jesus, the more we get to know him, then our obedience walks as in, in, in union uh, as with our knowledge of Jesus. In other words, I walk in obedience to what I know about Jesus. I hope that makes sense to you. And so we begin, so number one is, to, as far as walking in the light, number one is follow Jesus. Number two is read and live the word of God. And then number three, and this is where I really, I want to inspire you here. I really, I hope that I'm able to encourage you, but then also inspire you into action. And number three, we find out of Ephesians chapter five, verse eight and nine, it says, for once, for once, in other words, at some point you were full of darkness. But now, today, here, right now, you have light from the Lord. So live as people of light. For this light within you produces only what is good and right 
and true. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 through 16. Jesus says, you are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Number three is be light. Be light. I want to encourage you. I want to inspire you to be light. And what, what does that look like? What does it look like to be light? This is what it means. This is what it means is dark times like what we're living today in some form or fashion. Dark times are just an opportunity to shine. That's what it is. Anytime it's dark, we shouldn't, we shouldn't give in to chaos and give in to panic and give in to fear. We should say, it's an opportunity to use my flashlight. It's an opportunity to turn on that light and show people the love of Jesus. It's an opportunity to show people the love of God. It's the opportunity to show people what Jesus is doing inside of me. It's an opportunity to show people how much I care because of how much Jesus cares about them. So the way that we are the light is, hey, give to somebody. If you know somebody that's in need, hey, let's, let, listen, let's not become hoarders. That's not, that is not biblical. That is not what Jesus wants us to do. He doesn't want us to hoard up all of the toilet paper so nobody else has any. Come on. What he wants us to do is he wants us to share. Listen, if you're blessed and you're able to buy a lot, don't do it just so that you have 100,000 rolls of toilet paper and then you stack them up in a doorway and make your kitty cats jump over them. That's, that's crazy. It's crazy. Don't, we, we don't do it for that. If we're able to buy a lot, it's so that we can share a lot. That's how we're light. That's how we're light is because we're able to share a lot. And maybe we're in a situation to where we're not able to buy a lot. Maybe we don't have the resources to buy a lot and share a lot. So, so maybe what we do is we help somebody. Maybe we get our hands and feet dirty and we help somebody that's in need. We, we, we go and we, maybe we know of somebody that's sick and they can't mow their yard or they can't do any yard work. So we go over and we help them. Now we keep our distance from them, but we help them. Or maybe it looks like we pray for somebody. We take time out of our day and, and not just call, not, and I'm not talking about we just text or comment the, the, the emoji prayer hands. I'm talking about we actually take time out of our day, Eat, whether they know it or not, but we take time out of our day and we take a couple of minutes and we pray for them. We earnestly and genuinely pray for them. Pray that God moves in their hearts and that God moves in their lives. This is the way that we shine the light of God. This is the way that we are light. And listen to what the last part of verse 16 says. It says, so that everyone will praise you. No, 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 no. That's not what the Bible says. So that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. So we are light. We shine the light. Not on ourselves. Not saying, hey, everybody, look how good I look. No, 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 no. We shine the light. And we say, look at what Jesus has done in me and look at what Jesus can do for you. I care because Jesus cares. I serve because Jesus serves. I love because Jesus loves. I pray because Jesus prays. This is a great, I, I think this, the church, I think this is an amazing opportunity. I think we have an amazing opportunity to shine the light of Jesus right now. As a church, as individuals, together as one church or just as your family or you as an individual. I believe we have an incredible opportunity right now. Let's cease it. Let's cease it. Let's pray for people more than we ever had before. Let's serve people more than we ever had before. Let's give more than what we ever had before. When everybody else is hoarding, let's be the people who share. And let's shine the light on Jesus. Let's let everybody know, that everybody would know, that our entire family, everybody we come in contact with would know that Jesus is still the light of the world. 
that no matter how dark and chaotic it may seem, we don't have to walk in darkness. And I want to speak to you right now. Before we pray and close, I want to speak to you right now. And maybe, maybe you are, maybe you are in a dark place. Your mind has been wandering and your soul and your heart and you've felt it. You've been feeling it in your spirit. I want you to know you don't have to live in darkness. Allow the light of Jesus to shine through and find breakthrough today in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you. God, my prayer for you is out of Psalms 18, 28. It says, you light a lamp for me. God, light a lamp for everyone listening to this. The Lord, my God, lights up my darkness. God, for those that are living in darkness right now, who find their hearts heavy and their spirits heavy, Lord, light up their darkness today in the name of Jesus. Bring peace, comfort, and joy into their hearts and homes in the name of Jesus. God, help us. Help us to follow you, to read and live your word. And God, help us to be the light for someone. Help us to be the light of the world and shine your light. These are great times, God, to, be, to shine your light and to shine the light on you. Church, I hope you would accept the, the challenge. I hope you would be inspired. I hope you are encouraged to be the light for someone and shine it on Jesus. Jesus, we love you. We thank you, God, for your word. It's in your name we pray. Amen.